I'm Brother Lars Jordan, pastor of New Bethel Baptist Church, located at 2729 Oak Grove Road in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And today, June the 26th, 2016, this is the 13th lesson of this quarter, according to the boards. And the subject of our lesson today is willful ignorance will lead to disaster. And our unifying topic, our international lesson is ignoring God's plain truth. Our Bible scriptures today are taken from Romans, the first chapter, verses 18 through 23 and verses 28 through 32, according to the boys book. But the international lesson also has in there verses 25 through 27, which are excluded from this, but we will deal with them on today. Our background scriptures are taken from the 8th chapter of Psalms and Romans, the first chapter, verses 18 through 32. So those verses are in the background, even for the boards. And going into this lesson today, we know that this can be a very touching and emotional lesson at this time in lieu of what our country is going through right now. But even though the country is going through something, the word of God still stands true. You can't skip over things just because you don't like what it's saying. Now, I do caution everyone about the Word of God. When we are studying and reading the Word of God, we seem to put people into certain groups and categories. And we have categories of sin that we like to put people into, but I try to warn people that the wages of every bit of sin, whether we consider it to be an abomination, and some of it, the Bible does speak of it as abomination, all of it carries the same penalty, and that is death, the Bible tells us in Romans 6 and 23. But the gift of God is eternal life. Now, when we look at this lesson today, the word that stands out and is going to stand out bigger than anything else as we start in is wrath, the wrath of God. Now, it seems to some, and it has been spoken of many times, I've heard it many times myself, that God seems to be a softer God in the New Testament than he is in the Old Testament. Now, I caution and warn everyone that takes on this type of mentality, attitude, and response to the Word of God. The, because the Scripture teaches us that God said himself in Malachi 3 and 6, for I am the Lord, I change not. So God is still this God of wrath, but he is the God of wrath against sin, the same God. He is this God. So as we get into this lesson today, let's understand that when, he's talk, when, when the Apostle Paul is talking at this time, he has a point that he's trying to make. There is a dark backdrop in the back of man so that the pearl can be seen, so that the goodness of God can be seen, so that the grace of God can be seen as we continue through this book of Romans. In this first chapter, he would go into a list where some would even see themselves in the list now, even as they are true believers, but they are not the ones that are talked about here. And we'll clearly see that as we get into this, because I know some missed that and they have already grouped everybody into that. And, and when they read list in the Bible and they see that they don't understand that that is not that them anymore, because now they are in Christ. And if you're in Christ, you cannot be that type of person anymore. Yes, the flesh does have its tendencies and it steps out of bound and off track every now and then. But if you're in Christ, he has you in his hand. John 10 says, and no man can pluck you out. 
So now let's get started into this. We we understand this is ignoring God's plain truth. That's the big overarching theme of this are suppressing the truth of God, not believing God or taking him at his word, trying to soften him up so that we can stand him better and and don't have to obey him and, and live within the, the perimeters that he has set for us, we decide to get out of them ourselves. Now, the Apostle Paul here, writing this probably, the, the this letter probably from, from Corinth, he has a strong desire, if you have read through Romans already, to go to Rome to preach the gospel. He wanted to get there to the people in Rome and impart the word. The, the, this church had already been established by someone else. The Apostle Paul liked to go and establish churches himself, but he had this strong desire to go to Rome. But when he gets to Rome, all of us know that our uh, studiers of the word of God, we, we know that when he gets to Rome, he's brought there and he is beheaded by Caesar Nero. But this man wanted to preach the gospel in Rome. He has said there in verse 14, before we get to our, our printed text, he said, I am adepter both to the Greek and to the barbarians and to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome. Now, the spirit wouldn't let him go, even though he really desired. And when I look at it, we may not have had this wonderful and powerful letter that we have here that has been one of the most instrumental and instructive books in the Bible had Paul made it to Rome. We don't, I don't know that for sure, but I'm figuring that we may not have this book in its entirety, complete as it is, the Apostle Paul not leaving any stones unturned. Even the word of salvation is mentioned there in, in the 10th chapter. It is that message that all of us use when, as a witnessing to when we witness to people about the grace, the mercy, and the goodness of our Lord. So here, he wanted to go to Rome. And this is one of the reasons why verse 16 says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. To not be ashamed of something you are totally positive and sure about that which you are sharing. He was not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is a power, the dunamis power, the explosive power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe, everyone that believe. If that person believed that gospel message when they heard it, they cannot be these people that are that are suppressing God, pushing God back. They know that God is there. They the, the flesh may be rejecting God, but that person, that spirit of that person honestly knows that God is there and he is real. So it says that everyone that believeth to the Jew first. And also to the Greeks are the Gentiles. It's, Paul would say such a thing because it is start to be a separation, as, as some would say, in the church there at Rome. Because in Rome, there were, there were J Jewish believers as well as Gentile believers. And after a while, the Jewish believers would be ordered out of Rome, but Paul is, is trying to group them all together, but telling you, first of all, the oracles of God, he would say later on, were given first to the Jews. They knew the things about God. God gave those things to them first to pass on to everyone else, but then he gave it to the Greek or the Gentiles. For therein is the righteousness of God, verse 17, uh, revealed from faith to faith. The righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. From that day when a person accepts that gospel message, accepts Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that day the, the, that faith is revealed, taking them from the penalty of sin. You got to hear this part right here before you go into the rest of this, because if you miss this, 
you won't understand the rest of this. You have this person, these people that have believed this gospel message, they are free from the penalty of sin. That first faith that's mentioned there in verse 17, from faith, from the penalty of sin, but even to a faith where they're ultimately be taken out of the presence of sin and sin will no longer have its grip on them because they will truly be dead to sin. And when a person is dead, you can't convince them to do anything. In other words, they have moved on to a different type, different realm in their spiritual walk. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. He, he had mistakes. He had errors just like the rest of us. But his belief in God, his trust in God, when we trust the gospel message, when we trust Jesus Christ, it is counted unto us for righteousness. Then verse 18 says, for the raft of God, is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Now, the wrath of God, we, we've already dealt with, with, with part of that. We know that God is the same God even now in the church age that he was there during the law and the prophets. It, he, he, is that, he is the same God because he's not going to change. He's going to always be the same. The same how? He's always going to be holy. He's always going to be true to himself. So he's always going, going to be the same. The, for the God, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all, all ungodliness. Now, that's what it says here. It says all ungodliness, those people that are totally against God's purpose, plan, and program, those that, that are un, unruly uh, against the things of God, but not only those people, but also the people that are unrighteous, and that is that those sins that we commit against our brothers and sisters. The only way we can reveal our true love for God is through the the way the love that we show to other individuals and other people, but it's uh, but this uh, these unrighteous things are against man, who hold the truth in unrighteousness, who who suppress the truth here it means or withholds the truth, press press back the truth, keep it from coming forth. In unrighteousness, that is the people that this is this is revealed against. Now, if you miss this part, and I I've read many commentaries, and most of them, when they explain that last part, they do say suppress the truth, suppress it, but they don't show that the all is these people that suppress the truth. Now, if you miss the last part of that on verse eighteen, you are just about going out scatterbrain and sorry about that, putting this as peanut butter over a piece of light bread and spreading it over the whole thing. This all has a confinement of a certain people, those who suppress the truth, those who suppress the truth. This is, this is the all that he's talking about here, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Now, let's go on and talk about these people. Let's, let's put them in, in, into this. Now, be careful as you go into this because some of us will start to judge other people. And the first verse of the second chapter says, Thou art inexcusable, old man, whosoever thou art that judges another because you do the same thing. In other words, you knowing that you don't, I don't do any of those things that I mentioned there in the list. He's talking about sin. Sin is the same thing. And God sees sin 
as sin. That's what the Apostle Paul is talking about in the first verse of the second chapter. So, so be careful as you go through this when you start to put people into a department and you start looking at them a different way when you walk away from this lesson. Be careful how you do that because when you judge, the word judge there is crino. It means to judge that person, to condemn them, to put them in your mind in hell. And you and I don't have the right to do that. If God turns them over to a reprobate mind, get put them in a place of being uh, unapproved or disapproved or rejected, God does that. He doesn't even tell us that he's done it. So we, that person to us, we feel like they could one day come back to the Lord. Verse 19 says, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto them. Those things of God that could be known of them, if they weren't suppressing those things, if they weren't suppressing them and keeping those things back and down and, and, and they're staying in this ungodliness and, and this unrighteousness only because, really because, solid because they are suppressing the truth because that which may be known of God that which they could know of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. These things that they could know, God has, has put it out there. Even though they're not believers, he has given them a conscience so that they will know these things. For God has showed it to them, but they still refuse it. They, the reason they don't have a good grasp on it, that's why he says that which may be known of God is manifested. They, they don't have a good grasp on it because they, they are suppressing it. For God did show it to them as he shows it to us. Verse 20 says, the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. <laughs> now that, that is a paradox if you've ever seen one before because how can it be visible, invisible and clearly seen? Well, it's clearly right here. He said, for the invisible things of him are clearly seen. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmness show his handiwork. These things are clearly seen when we look out and, and see the constellation in the sky and the, and the trees waving in the wind. These things are declaring the, the, the glory of God, the those invisible things, you can't see the wind, but it's there and it's, it's moving. And, and all of these things, invisible to us, some of the things of God, but they're clearly seen to us when we look through spiritual eyes. So, so the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, the things that are created the things that are made, the firmament, those things that, that, that are made, even though we didn't see God make it, even though we didn't see him speak this into existence, it's still there. These things declare the glory of God. They're clearly seen and, and being understood by the things which are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. These things show God's very deity through the things that he has created and made. And eternal God power and Godhead, so that anyone that is suppressing the truth in ungodliness and un unrighteousness is without excuse. That person is definitely without, without excuse. Verse 21 says, because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, when their conscience told them that there is a God, there is a cre creator, even the atheist, he is not really an atheist because he knows somewhere in, the, in his mind that someone did this because God made us in his own image. So we have a conscience. So we know that there is a divine creator somewhere. They glorified him or they worshiped him not 
as God. They didn't lift him up and worship him as their creator, as God. Neither were they thankful when the, the simple things in life that they wouldn't have if he wasn't the one giving them to them. They were not thankful for those things because they were suppressing the truth about him even being God, but gave them, but became vain in their imaginations and foolish hearts was darkened. They, in their selves, they created their own, in their own minds, their own God. That, that's their, they became vain or empty in their imagination. That was an empty and an idle God that they created in their minds and, and their foolish heart was darkened, brought, brought down. And then professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, the word of God says here. They, they, they professed themselves to have this awesome sense of knowledge or claim to have to themselves this awesome sense of knowledge, but they became simpletons or fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image. The glory of the uncorruptible God, they changed this into an image. God is uncorruptible. He is holy and he will always be holy. So he is definitely uncorruptible. But they tried to change him into an image made like the corruptible man. Try to make man look like God if, in, in their own personal opinion and to birds and, and, and the fowls of the air and four-footed beasts and even creeping things tried to fit God into this in their own mind, in their own images. They made God to be this type of person. And then verse 20, 24 says, Wherefore God gave them also up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. Start to worship the trees and the birds and the dogs more and the cows more than the creator himself, who is blessed forever. Amen. Verse 26 and, and, and 27, I'm going to deal with some things that we're dealing with right now in our country. Because these things are out there, they're actually true that they're happening, but the word of God is against those things happening, but the word of God is against most of the things that you are doing also, especially those things that that, that you know that are sinful. So when, when we read this, don't go out and begin to, to point a judging finger or a crino finger, judging someone to condemn them as we go through this because you don't have that right, but God does. But he said, for this cause, he gave them up to vile affection. Even their women did change the natural use into, into that which is against nature. And likewise, also men, leaving the natural use of a woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat which was only fitting for them is what the scripture says there is as, as bad as that may sound to us and taste to us. This is what the word of God says. And if we don't want it to be there, I'm sorry. When you read the word of God tomorrow, if you come to this chapter, it's going to say the same thing. It says that that's wrong. And when God gave them up, that is the actual penalty. That is the actual wrath of God when he gave them up to these vile affections. Now, some will get away from that, just as some will get away from sin. And, and, and some of us have gotten away from sin, but some of us have even trusted the Lord and are still walking in some of those things. But one day, the Lord is going to deliver that person just because they trusted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They didn't suppress him. They knew he was real. They know that they're doing wrong, but they know that God is real and he will deliver them from that one day. There's a lot of people that know that cussing is wrong and they, they understand that cussing is wrong, but they are are not wanting to stop. So they're actually practicing that sin, but they'll tell you that this person is practicing sin and they're headed to hell, but you don't know if they trusted the Lord. We're saved by grace through faith. Understand that as we go on. Verse 28 says, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, 
A person that dis, doesn't like to retain God in their knowledge. Who doesn't want to retain God? Not just the people we just mentioned there, but those who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. They that's what that's who he's talking about here. That's who the apostle Paul is talking about. He's painting a picture here and letting you know that all of these people are in need of a savior just as we were one time before we trusted the Lord. Even as they did not retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. In other words, he gave them up. He put them into that, and that was part of his wrath playing out in their life. When he gave them up to it, it, to this rejected mind, to, to this worthlessness, when he gave them up to that, that's this is part of the wrath of God. We, it's not always what God brought down on Sodom and Gomorrah, but, but here it, it is explained as the Apostle Paul says here, and God just giving them up. Now, he goes into this list, and this is one of the more thorough lists in the Bible, but it, it, it's almost scary when, when we read these lists because we see people, and sometimes we see ourselves somewhere stuck in that list if it's not anything except the gossip part of it. So we, we, we look at this and we say, these people, this, this is what he said, being filled with all unrighteousness. It, it, every kind of evil or wickedness is, is this person right here. Being filled with all unrighteousness and, and fornication, which is any type of sexual sin, wickedness, evil and sinister and vile. This, that, that's, what, that's, that's what he's talking about when he says wickedness there. Covetousness, greed, or unrelenting urge to to have more of what you and I already have enough of. That, that, is, that is covetousness. Now, Paul would take covetousness to another level as he get into Colossians and, and tell us that idolatry, that, that covetousness is idolatry. So he, here he says maliciousness, meaning that total depravity uh, and moral evil. So, and full of envy, desiring something that someone else has, that to possess something that someone else has, not just just the, the material things, but also physical people. It, it could be to, to um, this full of envy and murder. Those things, covetousness, wickedness, and maliciousness, and envy, all of those things could actually lead to murder. What is murder? Murder is the total destruction of another person. Now, when we read murder, we, we have to understand it in the context that Jesus put it in and the scripture put it in. The tongue can kill a person and, the, and our anger with our brothers without a cause, we're guilty of murder, the scripture said. Debate, which is stride and competition and, uh, and also de deceit to trick someone out of something or fraud. Malignity. Always desiring bad things to happen to someone. Whisperers, that's those gossipers, those, those people that are starting starting rumors as, as well as backbiters. It's just slanderous type stuff. Haters of God and, and people working against God. They, they, they haters of, of God and, and, and all of these things. Proud, boasters, despiteful, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. So many are disobedient to parents, not even, not only just children, but grown folks that have parents don't want to take care of them anymore without understanding and, and with senseless, unable to discern things, covenant breakers, without natural affection, placeable, unmerciful, placeable, unwilling to come to an agreement. That's what placeable means. And unmerciful, we know what that means who knowing the judgment of God that they that commit such, this is already instilled in them, in their conscience, knowing that those that commit such are worthy of them, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. They have, they, they don't want to stop it. They suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Father God, we thank you today for the study of your word. And Father, we pray that this word will get in our hearts and minds and simmer on us all the day long, Lord. Lord, search our hearts. Forgive us of sin. In the name of Jesus, we pray.
Amen.